Hello, welcome to my channel. The main rule for the quilting is that there are no rules. You will learn, you will uh, watch others and you will find the methods and ways of quilting that works for you. And that's the most important thing because you need to find uh, what works for you to be able to enjoy the process. What you will see is my process of working with different materials and uh, different designs. And I hope some of those tips and tricks will help you in your own journey. So I would like to share today uh, some tips information about sewing on the counting tape. <coughs> One, there you can find on the market a fairly few sizes of the counting tape. Um, I've got one more which is even narrower than this one. Uh, so, uh, and they, uh, this one is thermal, this one is just normal paper. I've used both, they work fine either way. Um, about sewing on. So I did try before just to put a whole roll, um, you know, next to machine and sew it, but it wasn't very comfortable unless the, the roll kind of shrink to the manageable size. So what I normally do, I just tear about two, three yards out of it and that will be the piece I will be working at the time. Once the roll gets smaller like this, then I can put it, just leave it as is. And what I would normally do, just put a piece of string around it and, and tie it around the machine so it stays in the place and I just, I'm just pulling it out. So that's one thing. Second thing, what I tried before with, with that when I sew, um, I was stitching to kind of finish it off and try not Try, try to keep the stitches together or the seams together I was sewing on the edge of that paper um, to, to kind of keep the stitches in and um, it, it does work but what happens is you have more paper to worry about when you want to remove it so uh, because I normally remove the paper after I've sewn it to something that means I've you, you know I've got this piece of paper to remove and then there's another piece of paper where they behind the stitch which I need to remove as well so um, you you can still do it I, I, you know you, you probably need to try yourself but instead what I do now is I I will stitch the things on so this is what it will look like when I stitch the, the pieces on then I will take it to the uh, iron and I will actually use the spray starch to, sp to starch it and iron it on so then it's quite rigid and, and sturdy and then I just go with the scissors to cut off on the, on the edges and it does work fine now what I would normally do I will, I will cut it just before I actually use that row because then uh, you know as, as with any pre-cut fabric the, when it's cut already and you're handling it it will start fraying so I will keep it in this format uh, I could I can iron it and starch it but I will not uh, trim it until I actually I'm ready to use it so um, that's why I've stopped kind of sewing on the edges here what you could also try is make sure what, that when you're sewing you have those uh, sticking out uh, edges and then sew perhaps just close by the um, tape and then uh, you would need to use the ruler and uh, cut it to half an inch wider so then obviously when you're sewing to do something you don't actually gripping the paper so you can remove it as well but I just found that it's, it's too much trouble to what it is so uh, that's the method I'm using now um, this is black obviously because this paper is uh, thermal so as you iron it, it changes color but it doesn't affect anything so you don't have to worry about that now I'm using uh, those rolls for the borders, I'm using those uh, rolls as a center for the uh, string blocks, it looks very nice. Any leftovers I will use up in, in crumb quilting, so you know you can use it in many and every places you really like. And I've tried to stitch uh, color coordinated like this one. I was stitching some on purpose depending what quilt I was working on so this is the bit for one of the quilts uh, I'm making at the moment so it's like all the shades of the white pages and then some uh, 
darker browns every now and then you can mix the colors together honestly it's 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 like crumb cool day quilting you can put anything and everything in it uh, depending what you want to use it for so um the, the, for the sewing tips just make sure your uh, length stitch is quite uh, small the smaller it is the paper will be more perforated obviously it will be easier to sticking out and later when you're removing the paper depend you know um, how you work with it if you do it like me that you will um, stitch it with another you will stitch it uh, with the paper and remove paper after obviously that inside, inside bit will be easy to remove the edges may not be so so easy to remove I'm just removing as much as I can very quickly and whatever is left I'm leaving because it will melt in the first washing and I always wash my quilts before I give them out so I know that paper will be gone so small bits and pieces if you have them left there it doesn't bother at all I, I've made many many quilts uh, using those uh, strips and I never ever had any issues with it so don't worry about it just remove as much as you can and you know if you if you remove it and you have like this type of bits and pieces at the end let's say like this got this sticking out on one of the sides don't worry about it if you cannot remove it leave it they will melt away in the first washing I bought my tapes um, on Amazon but you know a bit I bought the big box if you don't need many because the bo box I bought was like 12 rolls uh, on Amazon uh, you can buy it in the local stationery uh, shop with like office equipment and things like that they may have a loose rolls there if not uh, I also tried before um, parchment paper you know the paper you bake on uh, I took that and I sliced it to the bit wide. I just needed a bit wider than what it was here, so I slid it to sliced it to the bigger sizes, uh, the way I wanted it. I went lengthwise, so I cut the paper two meters long, and then I sliced it to the size I wanted um, uh, using using uh, my uh, rotary cutter and uh, uh, ruler. So you can work around it as well. But this is quite convenient because it's ready and. Uh, it's a lot on one roll honestly this one is almost finished but I probably had it for a year now so and I do use a lot so it's it's a lot of uh, paper so when you're stitching on it you know you're using either um, more or less cut bits of pieces it doesn't have to be even at all you know you, you, you're stitching on diagonal you're stitching straight uh, I've used some bits where the two fabrics have been uh, put together and I had this left over so I stitched it all as well. Just when you have a combined fabric like this, make sure that, uh, like here maybe show better, that that, um, that that seam in between here, you know, it is beyond that quarter inch because when you'll be stitching to something else later that will be taken over by the um, another seam, you, you don't want to kind of have a seam on the seam it's, it's hard to sew through it doesn't lay flat later so just watch that but other than that you can just do whatever you want see I had a piece of triangle which I've added as well again some some mix here from you know leftovers from something else so you can use that one as you know for for whatever you like I normally don't do that as a part of like a mindless stitching like with crumb uh, blocks uh, I do it more when I actually need it it's, it's because of what I've mentioned before it will start fraying so um, I make it and I will use it if I've got any leftovers I will just keep it in the basket and then I will use it for my next project uh, crumb blocks or um, depend on the size it might be part of the string block or I can cut it into squares and use it as a center for, for blocks, you know, square in the square blocks or, or something like that. So that makes nice starter uh, for another block as well, if I've got a leftover. Let's go with the first one. The process is quick and easy. You don't have to measure anything too much. As far as the fabric goes beyond the uh, edges of your tape uh, that's all what you need really a 
and if I do have a longer piece like this I will trim it only because I do also have a tapes which are narrower so all of those small smaller beads if they don't go to the crumb quilt they can go to the uh, bead with the narrower tape this one is even big enough to go on this one as well so I might still use it but if I don't want to because it's too narrow I will use it again in another project So I hope this short video will help you with uh, your um, project on the counting tape and if you have any uh, questions or comments please leave them below. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked what you saw please subscribe to my channel to support my work. For further inspiration and examples of my work you can check my Instagram or Facebook page. Happy creating!